know that Isaiah 54, 17 says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. That's part of the heritage of being a child of God. Oh, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we believe we receive all the good things that you have for us in your word. Right now, have the Holy Spirit just reveal to us, breathe on the word of God that it might be lit up, enlightened in our hearts and our minds and our eyes, that we might have revelation of all these good promises that are ours. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. We believe we receive that and thank you for the word of God in this session that we're about to dive into. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to this next session, Born to Win Part 2. This is going to be exciting. You, my friend, are born to win. You're of a God-like design and you are born to win. And we refuse to lose because we're born to win, right? That's the t-shirt, Born to Win Part 2. And I want to talk to you about the self-portrait factor. Your self-portrait. This is exciting as we explore God's powerful revelations in this series on how and why you are born to win. All this time, you were born to win and you didn't even know it probably. Remember my Pammy story I told you about? If you don't know, you don't go. That's where Pam was, right? She didn't know, so she couldn't go. And that's where too many people live day in and day out. In part one, we focused on the real you the real you. In Christ Jesus, you're a child of God. I mean, you're royalty in Christ Jesus. Part two of our series, Born to Win, I want to drill down on the subject of you and your extreme value, your worth, your identity. So we need to, we have to focus on the self-portrait factor. Your self-portrait. Just to prime the pump, as my sweet grandmother used to say, look at these truths. First Corinthians Chapter 6, verse 20. You were bought with a price, the Bible says. Oh, you're bought with a price far above silver and gold. You were bought with a price. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, In Christ, he is a new creature reborn. The old things have passed away. We're talking about you. My friend, you have God's supernatural DNA flowing on the inside of you. Ah, but the circumstances talk too, don't they? And they like to tell you that you're a loser, that you're going to fail, you're going to crash and burn. Your self-portrait is under attack. It can be traumatized by this world and the circumstances. I remember when I was in college, I had a really tough 24 hours. I mean, a really tough 24 hours. I had this dishonest, disgruntled landlady that I had given a verbal notice that I was moving out. She said, oh, that's wonderful. But then she, I guess, needed more money and she ended up phoning me up, telling me she's gonna sick the police and the, you know, the law on me and do this and that. And I'm just this young guy, I don't know anything about this stuff. And, you know, it's kind of scaring me. And then, and then I, Late that night, I was getting ready and running errands because I was going on the road the next day with this new ministry team. I ran over a rabbit. Well, that so upset me that I just hit this precious little rabbit and the whole car went sideways like this. And then the next day, I'm on the road driving in the bus, going down the road with this ministry team. I'm kind of nervous. It's my first time. I'm, I'm the newbie and I'm sitting across from this other young couple and they're really sweet and they're, you know, talking to me really nice. And all of a sudden, you know, the the boss said, we're going to pull over and have some lunch. And we pulled over. We're all going to the restaurant. And I let everybody go first. And I went to get up. And as I looked down, my fly is wide open. Unbelievable. What a tough 24 hours. Sometimes you get traumatized by the circumstances, but that doesn't mean you're a loser because you are born to win, my friend. Don't let your beginnings write your self-portrait. Don't let the circumstances, the facts, don't let your fly being down write your self-portrait. Many people fall into the belief that they are the sum of their broken parts. That's a lie from hell from the father of lies. 
the enemy of God Almighty. That's a lie. Satan hates you because of who you are, the image of God that you carry in the inside of you. You remind him of God, and so he loathes you. The devil hates you from the start, from the time your mother was pregnant with you. The devil has worked to sabotage you, to hurt you, to kill you, to steal your dreams, your hopes, your life. You know, though the world is infatuated with winning and overcoming, they often can't see past beginnings, initial beginnings, the, the start of everything. Did you know Walt Disney was fired by his newspaper editor when he was a young guy for a lack of ideas? Margaret Mitchell's classic, Gone with the Wind, was rejected by more than 25 publishers? Oh, that's junk, get it out of here. How about Albert Einstein? He didn't speak until he was four, he didn't read until he was seven, and his teacher described him as mentally slow? Are you kidding me? Oprah Winfrey, she was abused repeatedly growing up, but now is this entrepreneur and celebrity personality worth billions of dollars. You choose your destiny when you choose the message that you believe. What's the difference between a $1 bill and a $100 bill coming out of the treasury? There's no difference in the paper. It's the message. The only difference is the message on the paper. What message is written on the inside of you, on the table of your heart? You cannot outrun the message that you believe. You can't outrun your beliefs. Yes, you were made to be known, to belong, to be valued. That's you. You're born to win. Now, just because you were designed to win doesn't mean you will win. You see, there are factors. Oh, it's it's my performance, right? Oh, oh, it's how I look. It's my appearance. Oh, it's, it's how I feel, right? Well, maybe, maybe it's my possessions. I, I'm just, I'm poor. I don't have enough. Maybe it's my position. That's what determines. The number one thing in life that decides if you win or lose is what you believe. And not just about God, but what you believe about you and your identity. You can't just believe that God is a winner. You have to believe that you're made in his image and that you're a winner because you are a faith being and your beliefs either work for you or they work against you. What you look at and listen to, I want you to hear me here. What you look at and listen to determines what you believe. What you believe masters all your choices. Your choices are the sum painting of your life. Therefore, ultimately, you are the sum of what you believe. That's not pretty if all you're looking at are the facts, the circumstances, the hurts, the traumas, the poverty the not enough. How you see you determines what God can do. It determines what God can do with you, for you, through you. Remember the Israelites? They're about to inherit the promised land that God has given them, but they bought into a lie from the enemy. Look at Numbers chapter 13, starting at verse 32. So they gave the Israelites, the spies gave the Israelites a bad report about the land which they had spied out saying, the land through which we went in spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the sons of Anak and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight." You see, those were lies from the spies that the devil had inspired to mislead the Israelites so that the very promise that God had given them became became contaminated by lies. They didn't want it. They're like, oh, we can't possess it. There's giants. Oh, there's something to overcome. Oh, we're losers. We can't win. See, until you know the truth of your identity, you will falter through life. Why? Why? Because until you know who you are, you don't know what you really want, what's really yours. God's winning DNA remains dormant within you. What you believe overrides. The lies that you believe override the truth, the reality of who you really are. Remember, what you look at, your perception, that is your reality. Your repetition determines your persuasion. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Who do you see? 
Second Corinthians 3.18 says, And we all with unveiled face behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured into his very own image and ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another. This comes from the Lord who is the Holy Spirit. So we need to be looking in the mirror of God's word to see who we really are, to get a true reading on our true identity. You have to distinguish between appearance and truth, physical appearance and truth. Perception is often a product of your experiences, your history, your hurts, your distortions. Your self-portrait decides your conduct. When you feel like trash, you often act like trash. You react, you go on the defense. When I was a boy, I hated the mirror. Oh my goodness. Every time I looked in the mirror, it frustrated me. I didn't like what I saw. My hair was all wrong. My nose was just too, oh, you know, I don't know. It just wasn't right. And then worst of all, my butt. My butt was way too big, I thought. My mom would always say, stop talking foolishly like that. But I was like, I would beg my mom not to sit us further in the church and the auditorium. I didn't want to sit down where when we stood up, people would see me. I wanted to sit in the back so no one could see how ginormous my butt was. I resented every time the, the person leading worship would say, hey, let's stand and sing. I was like, oh, this is torture. <laughs> that was my perception. You must be able to look in the mirror and begin to see what God sees, the mirror of God's word, not the curse. Psalm 139 verse 14 says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Say that, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God, marvelous are your works. Have you ever seen an acorn? Just a small little round knot, nothing significant, or is it? Some people only see an insignificant nut, squirrel food, if you will. Just three parts, the stem, a tough outer shell, and a kernel with the embryo. The acorn is an embryotic tree to be all wrapped up in a hard shell. Poets have said the creation of a thousand forests is in her. The little acorn. What you see, you can have. What you perceive is what you receive. The world says seeing is believing. Faith says believing is seeing. Facts are not the truth, my friend. Facts can change. Truth is absolute, though. There are variables, and then there are absolutes. There's your age. It's constantly changing. But then there's your birthday. No doubt you've had disappointments, you've had hurts, loss, and possibly even tragedy in your life. But the truth supersedes the facts if, if you employ your believing power. So how do you rewrite your perception of you? Your self-portrait with faith, faith-filled words to be exact. This is how God operates. God responds to belief. Just think about how your beliefs have already been working either for you or against you. This is how God does it. God believes, God speaks, and then God sees. Faith is the language of God. Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or for life. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing God's word and hearing by the word of God. Remember, James 1, 25 says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's God's word, will be blessed. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, we already read that, but let me give it to you again. And we all with unveiled face behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. When you're looking in the word of God, you see back who you are, the glory of the Lord. You're constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another. This comes from the Lord who is the Holy Spirit. That's why I always start reading the word of God by praying and asking the Holy Spirit to breathe on God's word. It's the ministry of the Lord. Here's a life order. Here's a decree, a royal charge with the force of spiritual law behind it. Say this, I am made in the image and likeness of God. Say that out loud. 
I am made in the image and likeness of God. God is 100% winner. That means I am designed to live a life that overcomes and wins. Say that last part. I am designed to live a life that overcomes and wins. Good for you. Remember our grandparents, Adam and Eve? They're designed in the image of God. They were made to win, but they disobeyed and they sinned. That instantly changed their perception of themselves. They went from being connected to God, covered with His glory. Even though they were naked, they were covered with God's glory. They could relate to God, but then they became disconnected from God by their sin. They lost their covering and suddenly their perception shifted to an external view of themselves and they hated what they saw. God even said, where are you? Not because He didn't know where they were physically, but you see, they lost their true self-portrait once wrapped in God's glory. Suddenly, they didn't know who they were. They were naked. The Bible says they were ashamed. They reached for leaves to even cover their bodies, to cover their shame. Leaves to cover their shame. God's glory activates with the truth, and they just had their identities stolen. The pain and the shame of their nakedness, being without an identity, it moved them to grasp at the facts, the stuff, the materials around them for a covering, for a fraudulent identity, blame, accusations, anything for cover. From the tragedy in the garden, the lie of performance takes root. Remember, the, the serpent said to Eve, if you'll do this, you'll be this. That's the great deception. If you'll do, if you'll perform you'll be. You can evolve into an identity. You will be if you do this. When Adam and Eve lost their identity, fear instantly began to rule their life, pushing them, driving them. We all need a self-portrait rewrite. We need to be born again. God cannot bless you or take you beyond the limit of your self-portrait. Can I say that again? God cannot bless you or take you beyond the limit of your own self-portrait. In the Old Testament, Gideon saw himself as a loser, but God had to rewrite that, that inner image and he called him a mighty man of valor. His born to win story started with a self-portrait rewrite. How about Abraham, Father Abraham? Abraham saw himself and his wife Sarah as barren, childless, but God called him father of many nations. And their born to win story started with a self-portrait rewrite. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, as a man or a woman thinks in his or her heart, so is he, so is she. Your self-portrait is the magnet that determines what you attract to you. Shame attracts shame. Ugly attracts ugly. Hurt attracts more hurt. Blessings attract blessings. Favor attracts favor. Beauty attracts beauty. Facts are not truth. You have a history, but it doesn't have to define you or trap you. No. All things are possible to those who believe, says Mark 9, verse 23. All things are possible. All things to those who believe. The truth is, your design is based on the greatest winner of all, God. Yet, until you believe the truth that you are born to win, you will live a life rooted to the facts, the circumstances, the appearances end up just being like Adam and Eve, a performer trying to fake it, trying to make it, trying to evolve into an identity. Your identity is decided by whom you believe. If you believe the truth and whom you believe determines what you believe. Viktor Serbikov was the son of Russian immigrants and grew up in the slums of London, England in the early 1900s. His teachers thought he was intellectually slow, not too bright, so they told his parents that he should drop out of school and pursue some, some simple trade, just some, some labor job that you know was very simple. He was unsuccessful, it seemed, no matter what he did. Victor finally, in an effort to secure a maintenance job, had to take this IQ test. 
the place they sent him couldn't grade him because their score didn't go high enough. After retaking the test, a university scored Victor at the rare level of genius. Now, when Victor realized that he was actually smart, I mean, it was officially um, given to him, this judgment, he started inventing things. He started registering all these patents with the government. He went on to head up the Mensa organization, which is for the elite intellectuals of the world. I mean, there's not a lot of people that get into the Mensa organization. What changed? What changed in Victor's life? He's still the same guy, isn't he? Victor's picture of himself changed. When he believed he was stupid, he was really good at failing. When he believed the report of being more, he lived more. He thought more. He did more. He fulfilled his destiny. Who you believe determines what you believe. So let me give you another decree, something that you can speak out of your mouth. Remember, a royal charge is this decree. It has force of spiritual law behind it because you're authorizing God's plan in your life. Say this, I believe in God's word. That's powerful. Just say that. I believe in God's word. I choose to walk by faith and not by what I feel or see. God is my maker. Say that out loud. God is my maker and I am wonderfully made. I am his masterpiece. Come on, I dare you say that. I am God's masterpiece. So let's get a picture of winning. Since you're born to win, what does it look like? John Maxwell, the author and famous speaker, he said this, you cannot achieve what you have not defined. What does winning look like for you? It's important to see the picture. You've got to be able to define the winning picture. S. Truett Cathy, the late Chick-fil-A founder, and he was the president for a long time, said, we honor God in our successes, not our failures. Well, that's kind of what Romans 2 says, that um, the goodness of God persuades people. It's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Hollywood tells us it's when people approve of you, but then they turn around and they self-destruct. Wall Street says it's when you're rich, and yet securities only seem to amplify their insecurities. Their kids are lazy, crazy, because you can't fake true self-worth. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all else that you would prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Just God calling you beloved is winning, right? God does not dearly love you for who you think you are, but for who you really are. He knows perfectly the genius of your design. You don't until you know the manufacturer's standard. The more you know him, the better you know you. The more you know him, the better you know you. A winning self-portrait, self-image points to God, the gold standard. As long as you have a false perception of yourself or a limited view of who you really are, you will always live outside your design. And that means losing in some way. A bad self-portrait produces a bad picture. You must return to the manufacturer's standard. We talked about that in part one. Identity is not decided by the facts, but by truth. God's truth, the manufacturer's standard truth. John 8, verse 32, Jesus said, and you will know the truth, and the truth with a capital T will set you free, not the facts. Michelangelo, the famous artist said, every block of stone has a statue inside of it, and it is the task of the sculptor to discover it. It's what he would eliminate that would help him discover it. Knowing the truth has the creative power to redeem you back to your God design. We were all born lost and broken, a perfect design, but born in sin. And it's not your fault. But until you perceive the truth that you are born to win, you will live a life rooted to the facts, the history, the appearances, and it will be distortion. A performer faking it, trying to win. John 3 verse 3 says, unless a person is born again, she or he cannot ever see. Think about that. Yet until you believe on Jesus, until you're born again, we're all like our grandmother Eve. We can't see who we really are. The good news is this. 
John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That means the born to win life to make a way for us back to the Father through Jesus. Because until you know your designer, you can't know your design. Jesus took all of our sin, our failures, our shame, our past, and he gave us his perfection, his win. Now the fight and the race is one of faith, not performance, faith to believe on the Lord Jesus and his transforming power on the inside of you. Sometimes the painful places in our life talk so loud. They scream their dysphoria. Hear what love says. You are worth Jesus. That's the price Father God had to pay for you. Here is the ultimate truth in John 17, verse 23. Jesus said this. He said, you have loved them even as you have loved me. That's Jesus talking. Okay, so let's do another decree because this is so important that you author you speak your faith. Say this, my heavenly father loves me with the same love that he loves Jesus. Oh, one more time, I gotta hear you say it. My heavenly father loves me with the same love that he loves Jesus. Now respond, respond to God's love. God has willed to you the winning status of Jesus in this inheritance in his inheritance. Here's the catch. You have to be his child. You have to be God's child. He left the choice up to you. He can't decide for you. You have to make that decision. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. God says, you choose. You get to choose life or death. Close your eyes and just ask yourself, who am I really? Is my trust in God, the creator, or am I trying to reinvent the wheel, trying to make my own way? Am I trying to pay my own dues? You've got to decide in your heart if you want to pray a prayer and receive Jesus win for your life, but it's up to you. Be intentional right now. Don't be religious, but exercise your belief system and be intentional about what you want for your life, for your eternity. If you want the win, the victory that Jesus already accomplished at the cross for all of us, pray this with me. Heavenly Father, for too long now, I've tried to make my own way. My vision has been distorted. I needed the truth. Jesus has redeemed and forgiven me. He died on the cross. God, you raised him from the dead. Now I'm born again. My real identity is in you. Not a slave to darkness. I'm a child of the light. With every privilege of being a child of God. I've got royal winning DNA. All in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.